Let us see the next question. MNP Limited is thinking of replacing its existing machinery by a new machinery which would cost an amount of 60 lakhs. The company's current production is 80,000 number of units and is expected to increase to 1 lakh number of units if the new machinery is purchased. The selling price of the product would remaining unchanged at the rate of 200 rupees per unit. The following is the cost of producing one unit of product using both existing and the new machinery. For existing machinery the information is given and for new machinery the information is given. Material, wages and salaries, supervision. Repairs, maintenance, power and fuel, depreciation and allocated corporate overhead. Okay. We know that say any allocation, absorption, charge or recovery of overhead is never supposed to be considered for decision making because they are not incremental expenses. So this is of course to be ignored. We understand that so the depreciation is required to be taken into account only from the tax purpose. So unless this is from the tax purpose, we will ignore this also. So 183.25 minus 25 paise minus 10 rupees. We understand that so the variable cost is 173. Later on it is 165.5 minus 12.5 minus 5. So this comes to 148. This is the way the variable cost will be calculated on per unit basis. The existing machinery has accounting book value of rupees 1 lakh. So the accounting book value information is given to us. And it has been fully depreciated for income tax purpose. It is estimated that machinery will be useful for 5 years. The supplier of the new machinery has offered to accept the old machinery for 2,50,000. However, the market price of the old machinery today is 1,50,000 and it is expected to be 35,000 rupees after 5 years. The new machinery has life of 5 years and salvage value of 2,50,000 at the end of its economic life. Income tax rate is 40 percentage. Depreciation is charged on SNM basis for income tax purpose. Further assume that the book profit is treated as ordinary income for income tax purpose. Cost of capital is 15 percentage. You are required to estimate NPV, net present value of the replacement decision. Estimate IRR of the replacement decision once again. Should the company go ahead with the replacement decision, you are required to suggest. 15% to 35% discounting factors information have been provided to us. So this is the way the information is provided to us. I request all of you to go to the question please. Let us have understanding of this new question. This new question is about friends, the replacement of a machine. Just for the purpose of understanding, I am assigning variables like this x to the existing machinery and y to the new machinery. So that so we can better have a kind of understanding. The question is providing the information about the purchase price of the new machinery 60 lakhs. Then we have been provided with the output information. Right now it is 80,000 number of units with the existing machinery and with the new machinery we will be able to increase it to 1 lakh number of units. Selling price per unit will remain unchanged 
that is 200 and later on also it will be 200. Then we have been provided with the information about the variable cost per unit. Right now the variable cost per unit is 183.25 minus 25 paise minus 10 rupees. So it is 173. Later on it will mean 165.5 minus 5 minus 12.5. So it will be 148. Then we have been provided with the information about the accounting book value. For the existing one it has been given it is an amount of 1 lakh. Then income tax book value. It is 0. Why? Because it is fully depreciated from tax point of view. It is estimated that the machinery will be useful for 5 years. So N is 5. The supplier of the new machinery has offered to accept the old machinery for 250,000. So exchange price is given to us. Let's say they are ready to pay 250,000 for our existing machinery X. Market price of the old machinery is 150,000. So current market price is 150,000. And expected to be 35,000 after 5 years. So even after 5 years, it will have the scrap value of an amount of 35,000. New machinery has life of 5 years and salvage value of 250,000. Income tax rate is provided to us as 40 percentage. Depreciation is SLM. Cost of capital is 15 percentage. And there are three questions provided to us. The first is NPV of the replacement decision. Okay. Now, I have a few questions to all of you. Can we operate with both existing and new machinery? No answer is correct. That's why we cannot operate with both existing and new machinery. Why? Because we understand that say we have we can operate with either of the machinery. So we understand that say this question is about the replacement of an existing machinery, and uh, technically we can say it is some mutually exclusive options. Either you can operate with the existing machinery or you can operate with the new machinery. Remember that say if at all the balance life of existing machinery and life of new machinery are same, then in that case we can adopt incremental approach for decision making. Otherwise incremental approach is not possible. As far as this question is concerned, this question's answer can be calculated by two methods. The first is we can make the calculation by using whole project point of view. We'll make the calculation of the answer by using whole project point of view or otherwise we can make the calculation of the answer by using incremental approach. In case of whole project point of view, We will make the calculation of the NPV for both the options separately. Option number one is continue with existing machinery. If at all you continue with existing machinery, then in that case whatever the NPV that you are going to get will be compared with the NPV for the new machinery. This is X and this is Y as for our understanding. So the option which is having higher positive NPV will be selected or otherwise we can have incremental approach. Incremental approach is Y over X. That is the way the incremental approach can be adopted. And of course, so this is the way we can take the decision. We understand that say if at all we go with the whole project point of view. Then in that case, the option which is having higher positive and PV will be selected. If at all we go for the incremental approach Y over X, then answer of the NPV may be positive, may be negative, may be zero. If it is positive, then in that case we would select Y. 
If it is negative, we'll select X. If it is zero, then in that case, the answer is indifferent. This is the way we can take the decision. So do I write an answer of the question? Decision making about replacement of machinery in the thread down method number one whole project point of view In the thread down, option number one, in the thread down, continue with existing machinery. Now friends, if at all we are adopting whole project point of view and in that say option number one, continue with existing machinery, I want you to tell me what is the amount of the, that is say what will be the answer for step number one to step number three. I want only first three steps answer to be put by you in the chat box. So step number one, investment zero. Why? Because already there is an existing machinery. So what is the amount of the investment to be made? The amount of the investment to be made is zero. Step number two, depreciation. Importantly friends, the question is providing the information that it has been fully depreciated from income tax purpose. And this accounting book value value is irrelevant. We are concerned with the income tax book value, which is zero. So of course you cannot claim depreciation. So step number two, depreciation is zero. Step number three, in that terminal cash flow. For the terminal cash flow, there are three things. One is the capital gain or loss on sale of machinery. So working note number one, calculation of capital gain or loss on sale of machinery. So in that, sale value of machinery at the end of the fifth year, it is an amount of rupees 35,000. Because the question is providing the information that if at all you use the existing machinery for another 5 years, it can fetch a value of 35,000. Less WDV. WDV would be 0. Simple. Today the WDV is 0, then after 5 years it is of course going to be 0 itself. So there is a capital gain of 35,000. Okay, so now working note number two, or we can say that's a directly the answer of terminal cash flow. Is there any working capital recovery? No, so ignore it. Scrap value of the machinery? Yes, consider it. So we understand that's the scrap value of machinery. That is an amount of rupees, 35,000 less capital gain tax payment what is the capital gain 35,000 what is the tax rate only 40 percentage so 35,000 into 0.4 14,000 
and based on that they will compute the terminal cash flow. It is 21,000. When this 21,000 is going to be received, <clears throat> importantly friends, it is going to be received at the end of the fifth year. This is the way the terminal cash flow will be found, step number three. I want you to do step number four and step number five and put your answer in the chat box. Step number four. Calculation of recurring cash flow. In that, I do answer only for the first year. Sales. You can see that so the selling price per unit is provided to us as 200 and number of units are provided as 80,000. That will give the total sales value. Cost. It is 173 rupees per unit. Because friends, we understand that so this depreciation which they would have provided to us in the question must be from the accounting point of view which is irrelevant for us. We understand logically that this is the accounting WDV 1 lakh. So they what they must have done 1 lakh divided by 5. So 20,000 rupees is the depreciation per year divided by 80,000 number of units. That is the way this 25 paise must have been given to us. We understand logically that say how this 25 paise is provided to us. It is 1 lakh divided by 5. So it is yearly depreciation 20,000 that they would have calculated from accounts point of view and we are not concerned with that. Into 1 divided by 80,000 that is number of units. This is the must have done but we are not concerned with the accounts. We are concerned only and only with the cash. Any allocation, absorption, charge or recovery of overhead is irrelevant. So, variable cost is 173 into 80,000. There are no other expenses actually we have. So, we will get the PBT, PAT and PAT itself is a cash flow. So, we understand that say it is 80 rupees per unit into 200. Sorry. 200 rupees per unit into 80,000 number of units. That comes to 160 lakhs. Variable cost 183.25 minus 25 SA minus 10 rupees multiplied with again 80,000 number of units. 138.4 lakhs. There is nothing else. So we have the profit before taxes. It is 21.6 lakhs. Profit after taxes 60% value. 12 lakh 96,000. Is there any non-cash item? No. So let us ignore it. Profit after taxes itself is a cash flow. 12,96,000. This amount of the cash flow will remain same for the remaining years. Step number 5. Calculation of NPV. So year 1, 2, year 4 and 5th year. It is 12,96,000. Last year it is 12,96,000 plus the amount of the terminal cash flow. That is 21,000. So it comes to 13,17,000. Discounting factor 15 percentage. And a present value. We have been provided with the discounting factors. We will make the calculation of the first four years factor summation. 
So 2.855 and for the last year 4972. Two point eight double five into twelve lakh ninety six thousand. So the answer comes to thirty seven lakh eighty. For the last year, the present value is six lakhs fifty four thousand eight hundred twelve point four. Present value of the cash and flow forty three lakh fifty four thousand eight hundred ninety two point four less investment zero why because it is an existing machinery NPV forty three lakh fifty four thousand eight ninety two point four this is the way the NPV can be calculated for existing machinery please take down answer. And for option 2, replacement, please post your answer for step number 1 to step number 3. So starting with the answer, heading right down option number 2, replacement of existing machinery. Now friends, initially we had a discussion that of course the company would operate either with X or with Y. Now if at all I want to buy Y, if at all I want to purchase machinery Y, then in that case it is obviously necessary for me to sell X. Because unless I sell X, I will not be having adequate space in my factory going logically said so to put machinery Y for the purpose of operation and uh, even if at all I have space what is the need of keeping machinery X so of course I am going to sell it I have two quotations I make the best efforts to sell my existing machinery in the market and I got the highest quotation of 150 however the supplier of this machinery is offering me 250,000 exchange price so between these two, which one is better? 250. So we'll go for the exchange value. We also understand logically that say basically the value of my existing machinery is only 150. Yet the supplier of the machinery is interested in doing business. So he is giving a temptation to me by offering a price of 250,000 to me. So we understand that say over here we will be having working like this working note number one calculation of capital gain or loss on sale of existing machinery for our understanding it is machinery x what is the sale value that we will receive two lakh fifty thousand Less. What is WDB of that machinery from income tax point of view? In accounts, you may be doing anything. I am not concerned with that. I am concerned only and only with the cash flow. So, I am concerned with the income tax. So, there is a capital gain of 250000 Okay. Now, calculation of investment. We understand that say purchase new machinery what is the purchase price of new machinery 60 lakhs less sale value of existing machinery 2 lakh 50 thousand because the existing machinery can be sold for 250 that is a capital gain. So, we are required to make capital gain tax payment. So, add 
capital gain tax payment that you have to make 2,50,000 into 40 percentage so you have to pay tax of 1 lakh so what is the amount of the investment the amount of the investment is 58,50,000 this is the way the step number 1 will be calculated So now kindly take down the answer step number 2 in that depreciation it is cost minus scrap value divided by number of years what is the cost of the machinery cost of the machinery is 60 lakhs what is the scrap value 2 lakh 50 thousand and what is the useful life 5 years so 60 minus 2.5. So it is 57 lakh 50 thousand. Divide by 5. That comes to 11 lakh 50 thousand. Per year. This is the way the depreciation will be found from year 1 to year 5. Step number 3, terminal cash flow. In that working note number 1, calculation of capital gain or loss on sale of machinery. What is the scrap value of machinery? Scrap value of machinery 2,50,000. Less WDV 60 lakhs minus 11 lakh 50 thousand into 5. So, what will happen? It is 60 lakhs minus 57.5 lakhs. So, WDV is 2 lakh 50 thousand. Sale value and WDV are same. So, what is the capital gain or loss? Zero. Next, calculation of terminal cash flow. In that scrap value of machinery, it is 2,50,000. Working capital recovery is there? No. Capital gain or loss on sale of machinery? No. So we understand and say the scrap value of the machinery itself is the terminal cash flow 2,50,000 now we request all of you to do step number 4 and step number 5 on your own and put your answer in the chat box let us see how to do answer for the step number 4 calculation of recurring cash flow in that we can do it only for the first year that's fine sales 200 rupees per unit into 1 lakh that is 200 lakhs variable cost variable cost is 165.5 minus 5 minus 12.5 that comes to 148 rupees per unit into 1 lakh that comes to 148 lakhs Next is depreciation. It is eleven lakh fifty thousand. Both the expenses will be deducted from the revenue to find PBT. So the profit before taxes are forty lakh fifty thousand. Profit after taxes. Income tax rate is only 40 percentage. 
24 lakh 30 thousand add back depreciation why because it is a non cash item based on that so the cash flow after taxes will be calculated 35 lakh 80 thousand then it would be discounted in step number 5 for NPV calculation. So this is the recurring cash flow. Step number 5, calculation of NPV. Let us see how to do answer. It is year 1, 2, year 4 and 5th year. Recurring cash flow 35 lakh 80,000. Last year we will receive 2,50,000 that is terminal cash flow. So thirty-eight lakh thirty thousand. Discounting factor fifteen percentage. Again, the factors have been given to us in the question directly. So here, 8696-7561, 6575, And last year factor is 0 0.4972. One, two, four factor summation is 2.855. So it is 1 crore 2 lakh 20,900 38 lakh 30,000 into 0 0.4972 19 lakh Present value of cash and flow. 1 crore 21 lakhs 25,176. Amount of investment 58 lakh 50 thousand that we have found in step number 1. And difference of that is NPV. 62,75,176 This is the way the NPV is found. So friends over here we understand if at all we replace the existing machinery then we will receive 62,75,176 and if at all we would have continued with existing machinery then above we have found NPV, it is 43,54,892.4. So difference of this two is given a technical name as NPV on a replacement. You can see that the language of the question says that say you are required to make the calculation of NPV of a replacement decision means basically you are required to prepare a small working note as the difference of this two value and difference of this two comes to 20 lakh 20,000 283.6 this is what we understand is the NPV on the replacement sorry friends over here it is 1920 Now this is what say we have adopted a kind of whole project point of view. Now if at all we are adopting the incremented approach, then in that case, how we are supposed to calculate the answer, that is what say now we are discussing. Dear students, we, I am going to take help of a few working notes that <coughs> we already have prepared above for doing answer. In that step number one, that is investment. In investment for existing and new. 
over here it is 0 and over here it is 58 lakh 50,000. That is the way step number 1 is investment. Step number 2 is depreciation. For existing and new. Please write an answer along with me. Existing it is 0, new it is 11,50,000. It is year 1 to year 5. Step number 3. That is terminal cash flow. Existing and new. For existing it is 21,000. And for new it is 2,50,000. Step number 4, recurring cash flow, again existing and new, this is 12,96,000 and over here it is 35,80,000. This is the way you can compute the recurring cash flow or otherwise. The recurring cash flow can be computed like this also. Year 1. Additional contribution. We understand that say if at all we operate with the new machinery, then 200 minus 148. So the contribution that you are able to generate is 52 multiplied with 1 lakh minus 80,000. 20,000 more number of units can be produced and sold. Savings of variable cost. We understand that say 183.25 minus 0.25 minus 10. So from 173, it reduces to 148. So this is the savings on per unit basis multiplying with 80,000 number of units. This is the way we can compute the additional income and savings of expenses. Less depreciation. So we understand 1 lakh minus 80,000. So it is 20,000 number of units into 52. That comes to 10 lakh 40,000. 173 minus 148. So savings of 25 into 80,000 existing number of units. That comes to 20 lakhs. These two are advantages. Less depreciation. 11,50,000. Friends over here again we are required to compute the differential depreciation. That is 11,50,000 minus 0. So we will have profit before taxes. 10 lakh 40,000 plus 20 lakhs minus 11 lakh 50,000. <clears> so it is 18 lakh 90,000. Profit after taxes is 60 percent value. That comes to 11 lakh 34,000. Airbag depreciation. It is eleven lakh fifty thousand. With that, so you can find the cash flow. It is twenty two lakh eighty four thousand. That is the differential or incremental cash flow, and that is nothing else but the difference of this two value. We understand that so the difference of this two is the incremental cash flow, thirty five eighty. Minus 12,96,000. So 22,84,000. Either of the way you can have the presentation of the answer for calculation of the incremental recurring cash flow. Step number 5. Calculation of incremental NPV. Okay, all these are incremental values. 
So year one to year four. This is the way you can compute the incremental cash flow because with the replacement of the machinery, you are able to get the cash flow equal to this. Otherwise, this is the cash flow that you could have received. So due to replacement, you are able to receive higher cash accrual by twenty two lakh eighty four thousand, which you can find like this also. In the fifth year, it is twenty two lakh eighty four thousand plus. The terminal cash flow is two fifty. Otherwise, it would have been twenty one thousand. So two fifty minus twenty one thousand. So two twenty nine is increase over twenty two lakh eighty four thousand. So it is twenty five lakh thirteen thousand. It is discounted at the rate of fifteen percentage. Year one to year five and fifth year factor. Present value cash flow. Whatever is the present value of the cash and flow. From that investment would be deducted. The amount of the investment is fifty eight lakh fifty thousand, and difference of both of them is NPV. And dear students, this NPV will be exactly the same as we have computed as the difference of those two NPVs. That is NPV on the replacement. We will be able to find directly over here. That is one nine two zero two eighty three point six. So, giving explanation of this additional point, that is, say, recurring cash flow once again, we are able to produce and sell more units for twenty thousand. And for every unit, we will be able to earn one fifty two. For existing eighty thousand number of units, we will be able to save a variable cost twenty five rupees per unit. From that, depreciation is deducted. To find profit minus tax, and based on that, so the cash flow is calculated. Okay, for calculation of NPV, twenty two lakh eighty four thousand into two point eight double five. So the answer comes to sixty five lakhs twenty thousand eight hundred twenty. For the last year, twenty five lakh thirteen thousand into point four nine seven two. It comes to twelve lakh forty nine thousand four hundred sixty three point six plus six point two zero eight two zero. So seventy seven lakh seventy thousand two eighty three point six minus fifty eight lakh fifty thousand. So one nine two zero two eighty three point six. That is the way the NPV can be found, which is exactly the same as the difference of the amount to, which is our answer. Second part of the question: Estimate the internal rate of return of the replacement decision. So IRR is required to be computed. Then the third question is there. Before I do the second question answer, I am explaining the third question answer to you. Should the company go ahead with the replacement decision? Now, friends, <clears throat> before I explain you the second answer, for the third answer, I want to give explanation to you. We have understood two methods: method number one and method number two, as far as the NPV calculation is concerned. The first is a whole project point of view, and second is incremental approach. We understand that say. For the third question answer, we can definitely write that say NPV on the replacement is positive, so the company should go ahead. Now, when I am doing the second part of the question, when I am doing the second part of the question, just be little bit careful. If at all you have adopted the second method of solving the question, that is incremental approach, then in that case, directly you can take these cash flows. For the purpose of IRR calculation, that is year one to year four, year five, and this is year zero. Using them, say you will make the calculation of IRR. And suppose the first part of the question has been done by you, 
with method number one. Then in that case, what you have to do? You have to compute the difference. The difference is, we understand, say 35 lakh 80,000 minus 12 lakh 96,000. This is for year one to year four. In the last year, it is 38 lakh 30,000 minus, so the amount of the last year cash flow for the existing. That is the way you are required to develop a new cash flow series. That is the differential cash flow series on the replacement of the machinery. And for that, you are required to make the calculation of IR. Since we have done the first part of the question by both the methods, so doing answer with the second method, okay, that is incremental cash flow series that we already have prepared. That is this. Doing answer of the IR would be very simple for us. So just be a little bit careful for this point. So right on heading calculation of IR. So in that, so calculation of IR in that year 1, 2, year 4 and 5th year. Let us start with year 0, 0, 1, 2, 4 and 5th year. Cash flow, year 0 it is cash outflow of 58 lakh 50,000. Year 1, 2, year 4, 22 lakh 84,000. And last year 25 lakh 13,000. For this cash flow series, IRR will be found. Now friends, for the purpose of IRR calculation, we have to use these discounting factors only. We already have discussed a point earlier that for the purpose of IRR calculation, the difference at the time of final interpolation between positive NPV and negative NPV should not be more than 3. However, this rule will be broken if at all the discounting factors information have been given by the institute. We can see that over here, the difference which they have provided is 5 percentage. No problem. If at all they want us to make the calculation, say using the 5 percent difference, we will do like that. At the same time, be careful that we will not make the calculation of NPV of 15 and 35. Because at 15 we can find it is positive. Then directly you do 35, it is negative and then you interpolate. That is not correct friends. We have to take the maximum difference 5 percentage. From the given differences, least difference will be taken for the purpose of making calculation of answer. So now we have to be slightly like smart working is required friends. We will make the calculation of year 1 to year 4 factor summation. Let us say I am doing it at 20 percentage. Do not write anything. Let me explain you first of all. 0.8333 plus 6944 plus 0.5787 and getting answer of 2.1064 multiplying with year 1 to year 4 cash accrual is 22,84,000 so into 22,84,000 I get the answer of 48,11,000 17.6 Last year it is 25,13,000 and the last year factor is 0 0.4019. So that comes to 10,9,974.7. Total of this two is 58,20,000. Okay. So we understand it's a 58,20,000 is the total of this two which is exceeding the investment that we are going to make. So the NPV is positive at 20% and we have to take, I am sorry this total is wrong. This is 2.5887 into 22,84,000. So this comes to 59 lakh. 
590.8. So definitely total of this two is exceeding 58,50,000. So 20% NPV is positive. So we'll make the computation at 25 percentage. 0.8 plus 0.64. Plus 0.512 plus 0.4096. So 2.3616. So this is 2.3616 into 22,84,000. And product of this two comes to 53,93,894.4. Last year it is. 0.3277 into 25 lakh 13,000. So it comes to 8 lakh 23,510.10. So even at 25 percent, NPV is positive. So let us check at 30 percentage 7692, 5917, 4552, 3501. So 2.1662. 2.1662 into 22,84,000 so that comes to 49,47,600.8 last year it is 0 0.2693 that is this into 25,13,000 so 6,76,000 750.9 okay it comes to 56 lakh something so we understand at set 30 percent we will get negative NPV so basically we are required to do interpolation at the rate of 25 percent and 30 percentage so we don't have to write all the answers this is the way we will do some smart working for the purpose of doing answer so friends, after doing this rough work, we have come to a conclusion that say the answer is between 25 and 30. So let us answer. Calculation of IRR in the thread down. Step number one. Calculation of NPV at the rate 30 percentage. Why 30 percentage the red down is selected? Year 1 to year 5, year 1 to year 4 and 5th year. You don't have to give any explanation that why you are doing at the rate of 30 percentage. We understand that 15 percent NPV is positive and we have increased it. Year 1 to year 4 summation at 30 percentage. 0.7692 plus 5917 plus 4152 plus 3501. So 2.1662. And last year factor is 0 0.2693. 22,84,000 into 2.1662. So 49,47,600.8 into 0 0.2693 6,76,000 Sorry 676, 750.9 Present value of the cash inflow. 56,24,351.70 Less investment. It is 58,50,000. NPV is 
648.3 and 30% we got NPV negative so now we are required to reduce the cost of capital and we will reduce it to 25% hopefully to get positive NPV. Friends, from examination point of view, not only understanding of the concept is required, however, doing this right writing practice is also must before your examination in a way that say in your routine work. So step number two. Calculation of NPV at the rate of 25%. Try to calculate NPV at 25 percentage and then do IR. So let us see uh, NPV at 25 percentage year 1, 2, year 5 and 5th year. Cash flow 22 lakh 84,000. Last year it is 25 lakh 13,000. Discounting rate at 25 percentage. Year 1, 2, year 4 factors have been given to us. 0.8 plus 0.64. 512 plus 0.4096. So, so 2.3616. Last year factor is 0.3277. Present value twenty two lakh eighty four thousand into two point three six one six. So it is fifty three lakh ninety three thousand eight hundred ninety four point four. How old Ruta? Okay, Ruta. Rudamol lecture for the Nico Bodo Adarche, Kadachu, Biava Gabini group, Kadachu, Bava Gabini group. So fifth year it is 25 lakh 13,000 into 0.3 to double seven. So it is 8 lakh 23,000 510.10. That is survey the present value of the cash inflow is found. That comes to 62 lakh 17,000 404.5. Amount of investment fifty eight lakh fifty thousand. NPV three lakh sixty seven thousand four hundred four point five. This is the way the NPV is calculated, and now we will do interpolation. Calculation of IR. Discounting rate and NPV. 25% and 30%. 367, 404.5. That is a positive NPV. And 225, 648. 0.3 negative NPV. So we will do interpolation of both of them. Difference between the discounting rate is 5% and difference between NPV is 5,93,052.8 We'll take the base of the lower cost of capital usually that is 
404.5. It is represented by this much change in the cost of capital. <coughs> 367, 404.5 divided by 593.052.8 into 5 percentage. Three point one zero. So now final answer of IRRS twenty three thousand five plus three point one zero twenty eight point one zero. This is the way we make the calculation of IRR. Now the third part of the question in which we are required to take a decision. You can take decision by either of the method. The first is that you may write NPV on a replacement is positive, comma, so replace machinery. This is the way you can write the answer or otherwise you can write the answer like this also IRR on the replacement is 28.10 percentage comma it exceeds cost of capital 15 percentage so replace machinery so either of the way you can write the answer and this is the way you can write the decision so friends over here so this is a question about the replacement of the machinery this is the basic information provided to us. Certain irrelevant information is given to us like accounting book value information is given. Then information is provided regarding allocation of overhead. Depreciation is provided to us needlessly. Then the current market value is given to us that is of no use to us. We are required to take the decision. We can take decision by either of the method, whole project point of view or the, that is incremental approach. The students from examination point of view, incremental approach is always preferable. As this was an initial question, so I made the calculation by both the methods. <clears throat> In the coming questions, we are going to follow the incremental approach for decision making. Method number one whole project point of view. In that first option, let us continue with the existing machinery. In that, no investment is to be made because right now we are having a machinery. No depreciation because income tax point of view there is zero WDV. This machinery will be sold at the end of the fifth year for 35,000. So 35,000 is the capital gain. On that you have to pay tax. From 35,000 tax payment is deducted to compute the recurring cash flow. I am sorry, to compute the terminal cash flow. Recurring cash flow is extremely simple year 1 to year 5. Only for the first year calculation is made. Sales minus variable cost is profit minus tax. Calculation of NPV wherein the future cash flows are discounted for NPV calculation. Second option is replacement of the machinery. In that, so this is what say the important working note because so there is a possibility that say you miss this working note. You buy the new machinery, you pay tax on the sale of existing machinery capital gain and you are able to receive the amount on sale of the machinery 250. Depreciation as usual what we do normally. Terminal cash flow over here so the capital gain or loss is zero. 
Always make sure that say you are preparing the working notes and you are doing answer. So 250,000 is the terminal cash flow at the end of the fifth year. Recurring cash flow as normal. There is nothing great to be done over here. NPV calculation again. I don't think that say there is anything great to be done over there. <clears throat> In presentation of the final answer, you are required to write the difference of this two value as the NPV on the replacement of machinery. That is the answer of the first question. Incremental approach in that for both the options values are mentioned first of all separately. So first three there is no there is a almost the same. For the fourth step also it is the same. At the same time the fourth step can be done with an alternative method. Additional contribution for 20,000 number of units. Savings of the variable cost on existing 80,000 number of units. Depreciation is deducted. And based on that, so the cash flow is calculated. Going with either of the method is definitely acceptable. NPV calculation, everything is taken as the differential value. Say even over here, we have taken the differential value. What we receive is 250 and what we could have received is 21. What we receive is 35,80,000. What we could have received is 12,96,000. Even for the investment, we are taking the differential value. For calculation of IRR, as I told you, we have to take the differential cash flows for the purpose of IRR calculation. So if at all you have done the first answer with the first method, then over here, you have to be slightly careful in preparing the incremental cash flow series. For IRR calculation, as I told you, that's a roughly, first of all, we will have an idea that's a where IRR is falling and you make the computation of the two NPV one with a lower rate than that another higher rate than that afterwards we make the calculation of the IRR and that is the way we take the final decision 